If I can help young people come together, not just under religion, but under love, um, if I can help young people come together under a sport, I can not only invite them into a relationship with Jesus, but I can, uh, I can help them grow into their potential. Trusting God in between seasons of life is tough, but that's when your patience is tested even more. Stop allowing your circumstances to diminish your commitment to your purpose, dreams, and passion. To go where you wanna go, you can't do what you used to do. This, this, this is the in-between. See you posing on the sideline like you help me out. Like I ain't hear you talk about me, trying to count me out. They don't see potential in me. Shelters look at me trying to play it off And my daddy was hustling out here He trying to find a home So we can lay our heads down Yes, he came to the church Here in Minneapolis where I'm pastoring He came and Next thing I know he jumping on the drums And start playing drums without no lesson And after that He ended up the next Sunday He come back, he jump on the piano And never hear no lesson to play the piano He just play by ear Pretty good with his ears Uh been called the minister his first I know he preached his first sermon at the church over there and he was good good preaching uh good spirit good young man um serious about God serious about his basketball and things like that he just was serious about it he didn't play around too much when it comes to his business but he was very jokative now once you get him on a good day, he give you a good laugh. You you he have you laugh. He have a whole year. He have you holding your stomach. Hold up. What's that dance you be doing, news? I can't do that. I can't do that. <laughs> hey. Hold up. Did I do it? Did I do it? <laughs> Did I do it? Hold on, do it again one more. Let me see it. Let me see you do it one more time. Hold on, what'd you do again? Okay, I got it. Ah, dig it! <laughs> Hold on. He still has a passion for the gym. He still has a passion for people. Uh, but something happens when you give your life Sit. to Christ, you know? Yeah. yeah. I would just want to check and see how you was doing, you know? All you wanted was players and gangsters. He wasn't going if they wasn't rich and famous. Watch out, come on. That's guys, that's dangerous. Now you... Tell me how did that work out for you? Tell me how did that work out for you? Tell me how did that work out for you? Tell me how did that work out? Uh, what up, girl? What you been on? How do you see those snaps? For my eighth grade basketball coach, when I lived in Minnesota, he um. He hit me up like a couple, couple weeks before the end of my senior year of high school. And he asked me, hey, Chauncey, you, you still looking to get out of St. Louis? I mean, when I was living in St. Louis, I got tired of seeing the same things, seeing the same people doing the same thing all the time, every day. And I wanted to get away and do something different. So we had a conversation. And then literally two days later, uh, I had like, you know, four or five different schools call me and, um, wanted me to come play basketball. Hi, I'm Jeff Grinnell. I'm the director and founder of Youthology. It is a youth ministry based tool to raise a level of youth leadership in the church, parachurch, and uh, social settings. Tell us a little bit about your life uh, the last few years. 
Well, to look into the, to a leader's life is really like an education in itself. Like all of us have things that we would like to hide. You know, nobody's perfect, right? And uh, some of you might know my story. I lost my wife about four years ago and, uh, to cancer and spent, had 34 years with her. And that's like, that was revolutionary, you know. But I don't look at it as, as a loss as much as I do. I had 34 years with the greatest person I've ever known. And some people don't get a year with someone like that. So I'm doing well. I wrote a book on it. It's called Hashtag If Job Had Twitter to help people deal with hardship, suffering, loss. So uh, that's, that was probably the most defining moment over the course of the last four years of my life. And all the schools were in Minnesota, but they were like in the middle of nowhere. So I'm like, heck no, I ain't going to no school in the middle of nowhere. I got to go somewhere where at least I'm can be comfortable and where, or in the city, cause I'm a city boy and that's all I've, that's all I've lived in. So, uh, so I decided to go to North Central. I didn't know it was a Christian school I, or anything like that. I just went. And then after I got my welcome packet in the mail, I found out that it was a Christian school when I saw the whole list of rules of things that you couldn't do. It's like, you couldn't, you couldn't hang out with girls at a certain time. You couldn't, you couldn't drink, you couldn't go party, you couldn't do none of this stuff. And I was like, what the heck did I just sign up for? Like, is this a Christian school? So I had no idea. So I went back and I looked at the, uh, the website and I looked online and I'm like, oh, what the heck? It's a big old cross in the front of the, <laughs> the, front of the website. I'm like, frick, it's a Christian school. And I was like, maybe it's one of them Christian schools that's not really a Christian school. So I'm gonna still go and see what's up. Spent a lot of time in here when I didn't, when I was uncomfortable being on campus. Uh, spent a lot of time just working out and just sitting here listening to music. I made the decision to go, and the first thing I noticed when I got on campus was I was the only black guy. For like the first week, I didn't see another black, a black person until like maybe my second week of school. So it was a big culture shock for me coming from St. Louis coming from St. Louis and then going to, going to Minnesota and just being in an environment where I'm the minority. <laughs> and that was, that was hard. I remember going, walking through this area, the Delhi area, and uh, people would just stare at me. They were like, man, this dude's different. <laughs> people would just stare at me. And it was so uncomfortable at first because it was just all so new to me, you know? So when I first met Chauncey, aside from my excitement, I was like, okay, this kid is straight from the hood, okay. Uh, it really excited me because most of my, my kids, and one, all my kids love him, they call, he's like a son. Um, most of my kids uh, already had this relationship with him too. And as I introduced you know, my younger ones to him, he became family. So uh, it wasn't difficult. You know, you look at people's past and it's like, I have a past too. So it didn't really matter where he came from or if he had an attitude, you know. Most people that, that knew Chauncey uh, before he gave his heart to Christ would say, mm, dude's got an attitude. But I think God redeems everything about us, you know. In, in some ways, Chauncey really hasn't changed a lot. It's the same thing. It's just well, in the sandwich. It's just in the sandwich, literally. <laughs> that you, you eat the chicken breast, it's actually juicier than the chicken breast. You like that dry chicken breast. I see the sandwich that's undone, that's not cooked in the middle, I'm okay. I've seen one of the magazines. Yeah, exactly. Hold on, y'all saw a picture of it? A video. What's the name? Oh. Magazine. Okay, all restaurants have that issue. With no! Dang, this looks way different. This is totally different. My freshman year, I was on floor three east, right here, three east. And this, and this was my dorm room right here. When I was, uh, 
when I had made a leap of faith to stay in Minnesota and not go home. Uh, and I had to work really early in the morning. I would sneak back on campus because campus would be closed. I would sneak back on campus. I had no sheets, no nothing, and I would, uh, I would go sleeping in that dorm room. After I had known him for just a few months in the first semester of his freshman year, he comes uh, to me in December, and his, in his mind, his bags are packed, and he's going to leave the school. And he's like, uh, Pops, this isn't for me, you know. And as he's sharing his heart, I'm like, oh, no, this is the setup for a comeback, right? And so uh, he comes over to the house on the weekend and actually stayed over on Saturday night and went to church with us. We come back home on Sunday afternoon and we're watching football. Like, it's December. In his mind, his bags are packed. He's leaving. I don't know if he's going to skip out before finals or, you know, what. But um, we're, I'm on the couch watching the game. And uh, my wife was, uh, I don't know if she was in the room or uh, she was somewhere, too. But she was home, too. And Chauncey fell asleep on my couch, and, uh, which is pr probably, you know, pretty normal for college students on the weekend. And so I finish watching the game, and he wakes up, and and he sits on the edge of the couch and he looks at me and he says, Pops, I had this dream. And I'm like, well, tell me about it. And he began to say how he felt like God was calling him to something bigger than himself. I remember him making the statement, God has called me something too big for me, you know, something like that. And I thought to myself, okay, God, only you could do that. Only you would take this young man, attitude and all, in this, in this background, and make something incredible out of this. Here you go. I had a tough time my freshman year just because it was hard to get adjusted with a different environment, different community. So every single, probably like three or four times a week, I would go to this Somalian restaurant and I would, uh, I would eat there all the time, lunch. Sometimes I'd go there lunch and dinner. And I would just go there study, just to eat and, and just to get away from campus so I can like just be around, honestly, just more black people. <laughs> that was really why I did it. The school was different, the people were different. Um, so I had to really decide like, you know, am I gonna like quit and give up and go back home and, or I'm gonna take this as an opportunity and a chance to, to grow. All I remember was him bowing his head down, and he didn't really say anything. I think he felt overwhelmed. And I put my arm around him and I prayed for him. And we uh, dedicated his life. And really, to be honest, I think, I think that had already been happening inside of him. But to be honest, we dedicated the dream inside of him. Because I remember praying that. And uh, he didn't go home to St. Louis. Actually, I think he did the next few days and then he drove back or something. But. Um, and he finished. He graduated school there at North Central. I had the privilege of meeting his family and then to watch what God was about to do. After my freshman year, I was, I was frustrated because basketball didn't go as, as I planned. I'm at this Christian school, but I'm not really a Christian. I'm not saved. And I'm just uncomfortable because I can't really relate to anybody for real. But then I ended up getting saved at my professor's house one day he brought all the freshmen over, he would always have us over, of uh, Jeff Grinnell. He actually married me and my wife, and he gave a sermon about anguish and anger and all that. And I knew I had a lot of anger in my heart and a lot of bitterness. So I decided to make a leap of faith and give my life to Christ. And I did that that night. And then after that, I just felt totally changed. The next day I woke up, I felt like a new person. But you had, didn't you, did you have your bags packed? Yeah, I did. Like, I think, yeah, they were in the car or something, and you were going to leave, and then... Yeah, I had, I had my bags yeah. packed. I was ready to scoop the out. Yeah, man. I was about to leave, like, before the end of the <laughs> I know. <laughs> Dude, I was already done in my head. I didn't want to go back home to St. Louis, so I took a leap of faith, and I decided to stay in Minneapolis. I didn't know where I was going to live. I didn't know where I was going to stay. I didn't have no money, I didn't have no job, I didn't have nothing. All I had was my trash bag of clothes, and that was it, that's all I had. And literally, two days before school was about to be out, I had a buddy come up to me and he was like, hey man, are you looking for a place to stay? 
what you what's your plans for the summer? I'm like, man, I'm trying to get, I'm not trying to go back home to St. Louis, but I'm trying to stay in Minneapolis or whatever. And uh, so I ended up doing that. And he actually ended up letting me and another buddy stay in his studio apartment. So I did that throughout the summer. And I, and I just fasted and prayed and I asked God to show me my purpose. Like, what is my vision for my life? Like, God, show me exactly what I'm supposed to do. I don't want to just be alive and just be alive. Like, I want to have a desire to be something, not actually say, like, what race I was, like, my ethnicity. What's good, fellas? Y'all trying to mess up my video? Y'all trying to mess up my video or something? Which school y'all go to? You go to Ocean Middle? You go to Johnson? Why you over here if you go to Johnson? The city bus? What you doing, man? Pull your pants up, man. Not you, you. How old are you? How old are you? 15. How long you been living over here? 10 years? How old was your brother? 19? Where do you get shot at? Like, what side of town? Over here? Friendly? Why? What happened? He was in gang activity? So what you doing out here right now? I was over there, but we walking around. Just walking around chilling? What you want to do with your life? Basketball and football? What if basketball don't work? What motivates you then? Huh? Your little sister? What I saw happen was God take this incredibly gifted young man and his leadership ability to a whole nother level because it just wasn't about, uh, hey, let's get real, him putting together some organization on his own, you know, uh, that wasn't gonna glorify Christ. It was about this new dream that he had uh, to do hoops in Christ and to become like a trainer to the elite. This guy came in my job, this random guy, and he said, hey man, whatever God's putting on your heart, you just need to do it whatever that is. And I'm like, man, who the heck is this dude? Like, I don't even know this dude. Sit, Lex. I'm like, I don't even know this dude. Who is this dude? And uh, literally right after that, I was on, my, on the train on my way home, and the vision of Hoops in Christ popped up again when I was on the train. And my, inst my, my instant reaction was, dang it, I gotta do it. I gotta do it, because I promised myself that I would do it. So that night, I went back to uh, my dorm room. I actually wasn't staying in my dorm room. I was staying in my buddy's uh, Paul Bruner dorm room. And uh, I didn't have a laptop, so I started a Facebook page for Hoops and Christ on his laptop. Made my first flyer on his laptop. Uh, made my first business plan on his laptop. And that, that summer, I hosted my first Hoops and Christ basketball camp. And that was seven years ago. And to, to be a young man who would really train, show others how to lead through his own example. And so it, it's almost like uh, every year in the, over the course of the next two or three years, either our conversations or to watch him involved in different church positions and then graduate college, uh, lead the team there, you know, be an example to the whole uh, student body at, at North Central University and then lead the team and then graduate. It was almost like God was uh, step by step creating the person that he would become to lead the movement that he would lead. So uh, it's an amazing thing when, when a young person gives their life, their dreams and their goals to God, and he begins to architect the, architect the future. You, 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 it's hard to write that story. You just can't write. I would say that he is one of the top five young teenagers that I've ever met and watched God shape and mold something incredible out of them. And that's saying a lot because I've been around a lot of teenagers in my life and he's definitely one of my favorite. I love you. And now we're here today and God has opened up so many doors and opportunities for me to utilize my gifts and my passion to impact people. I mean, my intentions on, on when, I, when I meet players or connect with players is never about how I can gain something from them. 
about how I can change their life and change their world in some kind of sense. Uh, I'm very blessed, I'm very fortunate. Coming to Minnesota was huge for me. I mean, I found my wife, I found my purpose, you know, I found something that I was passionate about. And now I plan to use this as a stepping stool to not just impact Minneapolis, but to impact as many cities and as many young people around the world. It's not about me. Hey, Chauncey is. I'm, I'm really just doing this interview just to just share my heart, man, so people can see, like, you know, if, if Chauncey could do it, I could do it. You know, and that's, I just wanna give hope to people, man. Like, I don't, I don't care about fame, I don't care about money, like, all that stuff will come, like, Obviously, I have desires that I want to accomplish and goals I want to meet, but if it's not in God's will, I'm not about to stress about it and be worrying about it. You know, like I'm committed to impacting my environment. I'm committed to growth. And that's what I think everybody that's watching this should be thinking about. How can I impact the people around me and how can I continue to grow each and every day? That was good, Joshi. And Lex did good.